Okie dokie, good afternoon, we are done. Here you see the finished Sega Mega Pive, and to be honest, I, I, I know it's a good, good machine because I cannot stop playing it. That's how good it is. Um, what do we have? We have, it's a very, very, very basic setup, but I'm, I'm pretty proud of it, considering that this was a retro electro uh, collectible model, so it's literally just basically a scaled figurine. Um, like you can see here, I've covered it up, but it says, uh, not an electronic device, but it is now, so I covered it up with electrical tape. Um, so yeah, it's just basically a collectible figurine, and it came with a box, a cartridge, the machine itself, and a tiny little controller, uh, a stand, and a what was supposed to be a replica manual. So a replica box and a replica manual. Um, it's just nice. It's just a nice collectible set, collectible figurine set. But I thought what I would do is see if I could turn it into an electronic device, a working Sega Mega Drive. And then I thought, well, why stop there? Why not a Sega Master System, a Game Gear, a 32X, a Sega CD, everything associated with Sega, post-arcades, but pre, say, Sega Saturn. And that's what I've done. So what I've done is I've taken this hollow shell, essentially. Um, it had a working cartridge slot. So inside the cartridge slot now is a SanDisk 128 gig uh, micro SD card that contains the operating system and all the ROMs and whatnot. It's a standard, very, very standard um, RetroPie image, but I've modified it pretty heavily. Um, so the cartridge that it came with, I've hollowed that out because that was a solid uh, thing. So now it just sits nicely on top of the uh, thing. It doesn't go all the way down, but that's because it's now got something in it. It was hollow before, but I still like it because now I can see all of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, all of these buttons now work. So the on and off button is the power switch. And what happens is when you slide that across, I've got other videos, I'll link them up in the corner, um, where we basically put micro switches underneath all these buttons and modified the underneath. There's like little nubs underneath. So now that rolls across the micro switch. That runs a startup script to turn it on and off. The reset button is another custom function button that I've put in. So when you press it, this is a piece of pencil eraser which I've hollowed out and put in uh, a micro switch inside the pencil eraser um, because what was on here before was just a sticker. Underneath here, this volume slider is now a fan. You can probably hear the fan. There you go, you can probably hear the fan. So that's a two stage switch, so on and off switch. And under here, this was just a little red painted nub. I don't know if you can see it on here. This little nub here was just painted red. Um, I drilled that out, like hand drilled that out with uh, like a tri-wing scalpel, put a little um, red LED in there, and this is now a drive light. So every time uh, information is either read or written onto the SD card, like a drive light, the um, little red LED here will flash. So it's just a standard drive light. Down the front, again, these were two sort of little painted plates or stickers. They had uh, little nine pin DIN sort of connectors painted on. I hollowed them out and put in two micro USBs um, which I then soldered straight to the Raspberry Pi inside. Inside, it's not a Raspberry Pi 4, it's a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Um, because I know how to use those and they, I don't know if the image or the stuff that I'm doing is compatible with the 4 yet. So I'm still using the 3B Plus, but it works fine for what I want it to use, uh, for what I want to do it. The little control here was just a little model, but what I did was, as soon as I added micro USB so it would fit in the little uh, spaces for the 9-pin DIN connectors for the original Mega Drive, what I did was, hang on, you'll see, let's pull that one out, come on, oh, doing this one-handed is hard, so you'll see it's got micro USBs in there now, um, so what I did was, in case I wanted to use a different pad, or, you know, uh, another pad, or whatnot, or a keyboard, if I wanted to put in the keyboard, I made a little micro USB to standard female A-type USB, and I put it in this, like I hollowed out the um, controller, the little controller figurine, model that came with and just put it in the bottom there just so it looks nice um, because I wanted to use like every part of the animal essentially. Um, for the controllers I'm using these bootleg Sega satin pads which I've just stuck a little Sega sticker on um, because I like the feel of the Sega satin pads. I am, although it's not available yet, there is an, I think it's an 8-bit dough or one, one of the new um, Bluetooth uh, retro controllers. One of them is coming out on the 30th of October, which is in a few days, and it's a wireless eight-button 
Sega Mega Drive controller, which is what I'm going to get for this. So it'll be Bluetooth. So there'll be nothing plugged into the front anyway. But if I do want to use a wired controller, I want to do three player, um, I can just plug in these. I have two of these. On connected to this cable, uh, connected to this pad, I've modified it for micro USB, and this is three meters long, and I have two of them. So two people can can play at least six meters apart, which is bananas. But um, so I have two Sega Saturn pads because I like them. They're my favorite pads. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all of the hardware that needs to be... Yeah, I think I've covered everything. So, I mean, other than the, there's a little fan. If you look underneath, there's a little fan cut into it. So um, if you do, if I am doing online games, because this will play online as well, because um, I use the Lib Retro uh, RetroArch. So because of that, I can just play these Sega Mega Drive games with other people online. Um, and so if I'm doing that or doing a lot of, you know, sending or uh, sending files to and from or anything like that, I can, or when I was scraping for box art, I can just turn on the fan and it'll keep it nice and cool. But for what I'm doing, like Mega Drive Game Gear Master System, it doesn't really need the fan on, but it's in there anyway. Right, what I'm going to do is quickly um, turn this on and run you through the very, very basic image that I've put on there and then tell you how you can download this for free. If you want to build this yourself, you absolutely can. Um, I have no engineering skills. I have no coding skills. I have done all of this with hand tools from the pound shop. I have no power tools. Everything you see, all like the holes drilled out, all like the, the insides, all the only powered tool that I use is a soldering line. Even for things like this, it was all done with knives and hot glue and super glue and this. Knives, hot glue, super glue. No tools um, that need to be plugged in at all. No battery power tools, nothing. Hand tools from the pound shop. You can get them cheap and you can just you know, wear them out doing this and, uh, and you don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't need 3D printers. You don't need any of that. Uh, so like I say, this was 20 quid, I think on eBay, this retro electro thing. And I think they're doing a deal at the minute, so it's even cheaper than that. The Raspberry Pi was 34, 32, something like that. Either 32 or 34. And the SD card, I don't know how much that is, like 16, 17 quid. And that's it. That's all you need to build this. You don't need, uh, I mean, if you want to put in micro switches, you can. They're like a pound from eBay. Like all of this was like, you know, nothing really, like a cable, you know, whatnot. If you want to build this, you can, and you can do it cheaply. Um, if you can't figure it out, or if you need someone to show you, you know, what to do, just like hit me up in the comments. I'll show, I'll help you out as much as I can. Like I say, I'm not a professional, but if I can figure this out, like it can't be that hard, right? Um, but yeah, you can totally build this. If you don't want to put it in this case, doesn't matter. You can, all you need is a Raspberry Pi and the memory card, and you are good to go. Like and the image for them, for the image for the um, the memory card. Don't worry, I will put up an address and I will show you where it is and how you can download it and how you can install it. No problem, it's absolutely free. You can go and get it right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is quickly, quickly run through. I do want don't want this video to go too long, so I'm just going to switch the on button here. Again, I've got big clunky fingers and this is a tiny, tiny, tiny little button. So that is now on. So the drive light is now going. We're booting into RetroPie. What you're going to see next is my splash screen that I made. Sega, Sega Mega Pie, there we go. And I added the sort of like static and distortion on the front, which I like because it looks a little bit more, you know, CRT like. You can see the drive light flashing away there. All right, when it goes in, you will go straight to this is if you download this, you will go straight to the Mega Drive section. Um, every single game has got box art, it has got a uh, marquee, it's got a screenshot, and it's got box art. Every single one ha or should have a description and to the best of my abilities a description and details on there. Some of them haven't because I literally couldn't find anything about them. Um, and obviously I scraped for this stuff so I mean you can tell which ones I wrote and which ones I scraped for. Um, every single one. Every single one. So you have I think 900 Yes, 900 Sega Mega Drive games, all ready to go. You've got, uh, what have we got? We've got every North American game ever released. We've got some games that are only uh, available in Europe. We have some games that are only available in uh, Japan. We have some games that are only available in Brazil. 
you know, for, for our sins. But um, we also have games like, let's go down to F. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Let's go down to Fix It Felix Jr. So this is the game based on the game in Racket Ralph. It's a fully fleshed out game which was online, someone ported it to the Mega Drive and now it's on here. So you've got games like that. You also have games like... I could do this but I've only got one hand so you can skip by... Um, you can totally skip by <laughs> letter. But again, I don't have two hands free. Oh, you've also got um, no need for swapping over carts for Sonic the Hedgehog because I've added uh, Sonic plus Sonic 2, Sonic plus Sonic 3, and Sonic plus Sonic 1. So you don't have to worry about switching over carts, any of that nonsense. I've just put on the ROMs where they're already linked. For things like, uh, where is it? T-A, T-A, Tailspin, Tanglewood. Right. So Tanglewood is a game that came out in 2018 by Big Eiffel Corporation. It was a new game released for the Mega Drive. So I put that on there. Um, loads of really, really, really cool stuff on there. Anyway, when you start, you'll start loaded into the Mega Drive section. When you press back and you go up, you have Sega Mega Drive games, 327 of them. You have 372 Game Gear games, 78 Sega SG-1000 games. You also have, going down, all the 32X games, including a couple of prototypes. And you also have 174 Sega CD games and some prototypes and some betas in there as well. Not many because some of them are broken. The least broken betas and the least broken prototypes are in there as well. By the way, if you do download this, play this game. The Oh, the soundtrack is amazing. So, yeah. All in there, you can go random. If you want to find a random game, you can sort random by system, random by game within that system. You can discover new games that you've never played before. Everything is set up for six-button controllers, and everything is good to go to be played online, although you're going to have to muck around in uh, the RetroPie setup. Sorry, the RetroArch setup to um, get that going yourself, but it's all good to go. Um, very, very, very quickly, there is no RetroPie menu. I wanted to keep it as clean as possible. So if you want to turn on the RetroPie menu again, there are YouTube videos showing you how to do that. You'll have to basically exit out of Emulation Station and get into uh, RetroPie setup via the um, command prompt. However, if you're happy and it's all good to go, you should never need to do I mean, only for like logging online and stuff, but seeing as every ROM is on there anyway, you shouldn't really need to do that. Okay, one other thing I quickly want to point out is whenever you leave the machine for, it's set for five minutes at the moment. Whenever you leave it for five minutes, it will play a selection of UK Mega Drive ads from the 90s. So this is the very first advert here with our uh, protagonist Jimmy and a ninja comes in and uh, he bounces him to the top of uh, Canary Wharf Tower or one Canada Square Tower. Boing! Up he goes. All right, I'm gonna throw this little jump cut right in the middle of where I'll show you the screensavers just because it's a little thing that I think is quite funny. Um, the Sega Mega Drive came out in Japan in 1989 and it would have come out, I think, in 1990 in the UK. Um, the adverts that I put in the screensaver, I try to do them chronologically as best I can. Not all of them, but the like the memorable ones. The very first one, and I think it might be the very first um, UK Mega Drive advert, has got Jimmy in like the white, you know, white vest top. Um, not the barber, the other guy, the guy that gets the Cyber Race Cup. His name was Jimmy, and um, the very first advert has got him in that truck with the with the thing in the background, and I've just got it. Paused on the screen now. I'm just going to show you why I think it's so funny. Okay, so here's his truck, and here's sort of like this bit of wasteland, and this tower in the background. Now, this completely empty tower, there's no lights on other than like maybe a few here. This is called, and it's widely regarded as Canary Wharf Tower, but it's not. It's actually called One Canada Square. All of this here, all of this industrial land, when this was made, so this must have been made in what, if the 
Canary Wharf opened, or One Canada Square opened in 1991. This advert must have been shot in 1990 when the Mega Drive released, right? That's why there's nobody in it. It's completely empty. The wasteland here hasn't had anything built on it since the Nazis bombed it back in World War II. So this is just old industrial land, right? This is where, like, the O2 would be now. Or actually, this is, like, South Quay. So South Quay Station and all that would have been, like, over here somewhere. Anyway, the reason I bring it up, empty st <laughs> empty tower here. When you look at it now, look how many buildings are beside it. That's one Canary Wharf there. All right, hang on, let me get my finger out of the way. That's one Canary Wharf there. Look about how many buildings are around it now. It's kind of just buried. But back there, it just made me laugh that it's the only one there. <laughs> it's completely empty. And there's no one in it. Uh, it just made me laugh. Anyway, yeah, gonna cut you back now. Uh, and then he, the adverts that follow this are the barber ads, which um, were famous in the UK and got very, very weird. So it starts with this guy, the barber, and Jimmy and this little boy asking for the Cybo razor cut. Um, these adverts got so weird towards the end of the uh, Sega life cycle, I think they had to be shown after the watershed, which is a very weird thing in the UK, or was a very weird thing in the UK. Um, but yeah, so when you leave the machine for five or so minutes, it will take you to this. And then at any point you can just jump back out and it will take you back to the Sega Mega Drive. Um, there's quite a few of that. that, that little video that I've knocked together runs for about 12, 11 or 12 minutes. So it's got lots and lots and they get progressively weirder. Um, that's pretty much it as far as the, uh, the stuff goes. Let me just quickly show you one other thing. Say you're in a game. Let's pick a random game. Uh, what random game should we pick? Uh, Gargoyles. There you go. For the Sega Mega Drive. You won't see a, a splash screen when you boot. It'll just go straight into the game because I want it to be like as close to the um, original machine as possible. So you can see we're in the game. Now, again, like I said before, when I turn the machine on, I've got big clunky fingers. So what I'm going to do is try my best just to go down here and tap this reset button. So when you press the reset button, it takes you straight back into emulation station. And again... At the end of this video, I'll put up a link to show you how to wire it all up. If you're not good with soldering and you can buy a little DuPont cables, you can just make this yourself, no problem. Or if you buy one of those um, Mega Drive Raspberry Pi cases, I'll show you how to, you know, as long as you've got the image, the image on the um, SD card, it shouldn't be an issue. You can just put it onto the SD card. And if you put the switches and the buttons on the right GPIO pins, it will just work. No problem. I've done all the hard work for you. Okay, so that's that's it. I'm pretty much, um, like I say, I'm pretty happy with the image. And um, I'm just going to switch the machine off here. So I'm just going to, again, just do that. Flash. Turning off. No, no. So how can you get this? Well, it's pretty simple. If you want to download the image... For the Sega Mega Pie, you absolutely can, and it's 100% free. I have put it on my OneDrive. Um, it comes in three chunks, Sega Mega Pie 001, 2, and 3. It is 22.5 gigs for the first bit, 22.5 for the second, and 19.8. You will need a 128 gig micro SD card to put it on. When you do, 7-Zip will uh, put it back together into one .img file. It's password protected. The password is mega. So first things first, go to the address on screen now or click on the link in the description. When you've done that, it will take you here. You can download as many times as you want, Megapive uh, 001, 002, 003. 7-Zip will put that together into one .img file. You will then need something called Win32 Disk Imager. Win32 Disk Imager, small program, again, link for it down the bottom. That will take your .img file and write it onto your 128 gig SD card. That's all you've got to do. You are good to go. However, if you're also on this um, public OneDrive and you want to download the PS Legacy, you totally can. PS Legacy 001, 002, 003. All you, again, all you need is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and a 128 gig micro SD card. That's it. And you're good to go with that as well. So if you want the Sega, P um, the PS Legacy, you can, or the Sega Mega Pie, also can. 
The PlayStation Legacy, if you do download it, the password for that is Legacy. And don't forget the password for the Sega Mega Pipe, if you download that, to unzip it and put it back together, the password is Mega. The build. If you're trying to build something like this yourself, you 100% can. There is nothing stopping you. All the image is there for you, ready to go. Like I say, you don't have to build it into one of these retro electro cases. You can buy any of the uh, Sega, uh, Sega Mega Drive or Genesis Raspberry Pi cases. It will work just fine. As long as you can fit in a Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, and you've got yourself a 128 gig micro SD card, there's pardon me, nothing stopping you. Just download the image, throw it on there. Also, if you're interested in building... Oh, God, let's get under there. Here's my place. Man, that's dusty. Um, this is the PlayStation Legacy. That is a PlayStation Classic, which, again, I did exactly the same job on here. Um, if you're interested and want to get the SD image for that, the SD card for the PlayStation Legacy is there. Hello. Um, that's, again, a 128 gig micro SD card. Uh, it's got the drive light there. It's got the reset button. So this reset button here is this reset button here. That's the on and off button, and I put a little fan under there, and it's got a little green drive light. If you want to get to the image to here, you can find that image at exactly the same place as the, um, that's just a perfect thing, uh, Mega Pive. But like I say, this is all up. It's ready to go. It's finished, and uh, I'm super pleased with it. I cannot stop playing this thing. I really can't. I'm Again, it's nothing fancy. It's nothing special, but I'm pretty proud of it that I took a um, not an electronic device, scale replica and turned it into a Sega Mega Drive, a Master System, an SG-1000, a 32X and a Sega CD with every single game released for those systems on it and even some that weren't. Oh, yeah, I'm super happy. Anyway, make sure if you want to build it, download the image. All right, cool. Peace.